Jesus said, if someone sins against you seven times in one day and seven times the same sin and comes back and says to you, forgive me, Jesus says, that's what you got to do seven times. So then the disciples said, Lord, increase my faith. When the pain is too much and I can't seem to get through the pain, Lord, increase my faith. When my weirdo neighbor is causing problems and I just want to, Lord, increase my faith. When the world is falling apart and everything is, seems politically and culturally is changing and I don't know what's going on, Lord, increase my faith. When there are changes in my family and when there's brokenness and sorrow, Lord, increase my faith. And I feel dry. And I don't feel like you're near. Lord, increase my faith. When I can't forgive because the memories are too strong and the power of whatever happened is too strong, Lord, increase my faith. When I can't forgive the same sin seven times in one day, increase my faith. The disciples wanted to have an extra measure of what Jesus was offering. The disciples wanted to be power disciples, able to conquer mountains, conquer mountains, go fly over mountains and conquer bad enemies. The disciples wanted to be able to do supernatural things of forgiveness. They wanted to make sure they really were super Christians. But Jesus says, yeah, all you need is a little teeny tiny grain of mustard seed, just a little bit of faith. And you can accomplish a lot. So let me share with you, in, in my understanding, a few things that faith is not. Faith is not something that can be measured. You cannot say to X person, you have more faith than I, or you have less faith than I. Or you cannot say to yourself, I wish I had, because it doesn't, you can't put it in a cup and measure it. You can't put it on a scale and weigh it. And weigh it. Faith is not measurable. I've also come to believe that faith does not mean you don't doubt, right? Faith is, there are a couple de double negatives there. Faith does not mean that you don't doubt. Faith means that you do doubt, that you question where God is, that you grow in an understanding of what's happening, that somehow wrapped together when we question or when we feel dry or when we wonder, God still works in us a miracle of faith and hope so that we know eventually that God is working. There's, a, there's an awesome story in scripture where a centurion had a daughter who was dying and he came to Jesus and said, Lord, heal my daughter. And the Jesus said to the centurion, do you believe? And the centurion said, yes, Lord, help my unbelief. See, right there, if he had said, oh, of course, I believe in you completely, Jesus would have seen through that. But when we doubt or question or wonder or really feel dry, that is not the absence of faith or by any means the absence of God. Faith is not certainty, the sunrise, you know, we can, even though we know it's not a sunrise, it's an earth turn, right? But still, we'll call it the sunrise. The sunrise or gravity are, are items that we know full well. And, and, and so it's not like we, when we believe in gravity or sunrises or, or the solidity of wood, that's not faith. Faith, according to Hebrews, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things that we cannot see. We're, we're putting ourselves in the hand of a God who is invisible, who has expressed God's presence in the gift of Scripture, who is present in a little bit of bread and wine, who washes Lucy and the whole community in the gift of plain water. Good Portage River stuff, right? In the midst of all of that, God is present and loves us and wraps us. Even when we question even if we don't know everything, even if we think we know everything, we're still wrapped in God's grace. Even if we have read the Bible from cover to cover and can, chat, can quote every verse from Scripture, that does not quantify or build up our faith. 
The disciples were a little bit scared because they had to forgive seven times in one day. Now, those of you who have kids may understand that there's an awesome word called why, <laughs> right? And, and it seems that in a daytime, little ones ask that a lot, which is delightful. This is not the why question because that just also means that they're growing. But this is when you've been hurt or someone that sins against you, Jesus says, forgive. So what does it mean to have faith? I have two images. One comes from a, from a Danish philosopher, Soren Kierkegaard, and Soren talked about the time where, where, um, where a, a swimmer would go into a pool every day, all the time, and one night he went into the pool and he was so confident uh, that there would be water there that he didn't turn on the lights. He went to the diving board and jumped off into the pool. Of course, there was water there. That story doesn't have a bad ending. But that's where we get this concept of the leap of faith. He believed that there was water there, and he jumped into the pool, not testing where the water was there or not. Sometimes faith just means putting our feet out, doing the stuff that we know that's right to be doing and finding out that God is already there. Sometimes it means just trusting that at this moment where everything seems to be wrong, that we just place our hands in the arms of a one who loves us. Sometimes it means when everything is going right that we know we are blessed in community, that we are blessed in God's grace. Sometimes it means that no matter what, God is still here. What do you need to make your spiritual life deeper? Where do you need to feel that presence of a God who loves. Here's the promise. Jesus, risen from the dead, crucified for us, gives us the gift of his presence. No matter what we do or don't do, no matter what we've done or haven't done, no matter where we're going or haven't gone, God is here. God is there with us. No matter what, the love of God cannot be, Paul says in Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Nothing. So that gift that we have is all we need to make it from day to day. I heard a, a counselor once who talked about a husband and wife who came in for counseling, and, uh, and the, the guy said, you know, I just don't know. I, I just don't know what to do to convince her that I, I just don't feel like the love is there anymore. You know, like there's this magic, oofy, poofy stuff that just helps us through. All. Those of us who have been married know that some of that happens, and then sometimes it goes and sometimes comes back, right? So the, the counselor said, here's what you got to do. Do some of the acts of love. Do the dishes without being asked for. Or wash the car without being noticed. Or pick up around. Or do the acts of love. And then you learn to grow back into that love. Jesus says, here's the words of action. Here's the things that we do that are love and action. Every moment is gratitude. The gift of coming in here is gratitude. The gift of family is gratitude. The gift of loved ones who are gone and in God's presence are still gratitude even though they're missed. The gift of all the changes, still gratitude. Everything that happens, sunrise, sunset, rain, snow. I'm sorry. You'll find out. Snow is always gratitude for me. Um, forgiveness is an act of love seven times a day. Forgiveness is a way that we live the faith even if we don't always feel like God is present. Habakkuk says in the reading that Terry just read, the righteous live by their faith. They live by their faith because they may not, we may not always know that God is present, but we live so that we care for those in need. We live so that those who are alone be, are comforted. We live so that those who need to be forgiven receive from us forgiveness. We live because God awesomely loves us, and that doesn't change anything. You are gifted. You are loved. You are grace-filled. You are full of the presence of God. And in all the trials and tribulations and joys of life, Jesus is with you with all you need. Let's pray.
holy God, sometimes, sometimes things happen we don't understand. Sometimes we grieve and are lost. Sometimes we just wonder. Increase our faith. Or better yet, Lord, open our eyes to know that no matter what's going on, you are there. Bring us healing and hope and joy always. In your precious name we pray. Amen.